What's your name, bud? Uh, Patrick. Okay, Patrick. <laughs> um, what was the, the like like the defining moment you had that defining made moment. you change from being overweight to start losing weight? Excellent question. You know, I didn't talk too much about my story today uh, from a personal standpoint with my weight because that wasn't why I was asked to come. I was asked to give more about really taking your life in the direction you wanted from a career standpoint. So with my weight, what happened was a series of things. It's never when a change happens in life, when you break through, and I don't know how many of you guys have a girlfriend or a guy friend, boyfriend, have a relationship. Okay? Don't, guys, you, we're amongst friends here, right? All right? Okay, so what happens in life when things aren't going well? You eventually hit a threshold point. In relationship, it might be a series of bad things, and finally you say, not another minute, not another week, not another month, I'm done, it's over. For my weight, what happened for me was, I almost lost my eyesight. I had eaten an entire pizza an entire pizza and a two liter of regular soda. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I couldn't see. My eyesight was completely blurred. I literally couldn't see. And it scared me so, so much. Sometimes fear is an awesome motivator. I talked about fear being something you wanna really work with rather than against, but sometimes fear is very powerful. That happened, I would be in a classroom that was air conditioned and I'd be soaked with sweat. I was 360 pounds. And I was 15, 16 years old, guys. Do you know the, the desks that are one, one thing, like it has the, the desk and it's connected to the seat? You guys have that? They suck, you said? <laughs> I couldn't fit. I literally could barely fit in it. I mean, it was so embarrassing. And so I said to myself, I don't want to get to the point where I'm lonely all the time. I never, I, I literally, guys, I'll tell you a real, uh, sad story, and I have to watch time, but I uh, got someone, a neighbor, to get me a date to go to prom, and she was a really pretty girl, and she was very nice and went with me, but do you know about 10 minutes into the dance, once we arrived, I rented a limo for her, I rented a limo for me and a couple friends, she ditched me 10 minutes in and went home with another guy. You know, and that, ooh, that felt like Jerry Springer. Uh, it, it, it really, when I had to drive home alone in a limo on prom night, I was devastated. I don't blame the girl at all. And do you know why I don't? Because I didn't deserve her at that point. If you want something in life, you've got to ask yourself, who do you have to become to have what you want? And that's the question that changes the game. Because if you want to look like me, if you want muscles and everything else, it looks great. You see the product, right? But you don't see the process. You don't see the day that my dad died that I'm in the gym benching. You don't see the day that I have a relationship fail and I'm on the treadmill. You don't see me choosing not to drink, not to smoke. So you just see this. You say, man, that's freaking awesome. Well, yes, it's awesome if you're willing to pay the price to have it. So whenever you set a goal for yourself, whether it be financial, health goal, career goal, you've got to ask yourself, am I willing to pay the price? And let me tell you guys this, and remember this, guys. When you get out into the business world and you're offered a job that requires an immense amount of time, there is nothing more valuable than your time. Time is not presumptuous. It doesn't allow for presumption. Meaning, it, you can't assume that you're going to have tomorrow. If any of you have arguments with your parents, like maybe some of you aren't talking to your parents right now. Maybe some of you aren't talking to your friends right now. Now you ask yourself this question. If you woke up tomorrow having your father drop dead of a heart attack and you weren't talking to him, or a kid that you were on good terms with, but something happened and you just lost that connection and you were holding on to that negativity, keeping yourself from connecting, not sharing love with him, not being good to him, not treating him like a brother, how would you feel? 
Time is the most precious commodity you possibly can have. I have guys that have made, and women, that have made billions of dollars and are alcoholic on cocaine, heroin, and everything else that are trying to fill the void in their life. I was filling that void with food. So in answer to your question, it was a series of things that came about that resulted in me deciding I wanted to replace those bad habits with something much more fulfilling. Okay, give them a round of applause. Next question. What's your name, bud? Uh, my name is Brendan. Brendan? Yeah. Hey, Brendan, go ahead. Uh, so I was gonna ask, how long did it take you to like get buff? <laughs> Uh, here's the deal. I started when I was 17, and in two years I lost 160 pounds. But this was not underneath the fat, okay? Um, you know, I've been on national television. Here's the cool thing, and I don't say this to impress you, but to impress upon you guys what's possible. I literally went on national TV and took my shirt off. On national TV. I wouldn't even take my shirt off at a pool. I was that fat guy that walked into the pool with the t-shirt on, if I even went to a freaking pool, okay? I, that's a rare freaking picture that you see right there. That's like something you see in National Geographic, like a wildlife capture of an extinct species. Because it, I would not let myself be photographed. I don't say that to make fun of heavy people. I say that because it's a commonality. When you don't feel good about how you look, it might not be, might not, it might not be weight for you, it might be you don't like your teeth. You don't like the color of your skin. You don't like how your hair is. You don't like your shape. You feel too thin. I've helped guys that are real thin become really big. All through proper nutrition, having a sound health plan, and being consistent. But it all starts with seeing that it's possible. Guys, if I would have listened to the people that said it was impossible, when they saw that picture of me at 360 and I said, I want to have a six pack, what do you think I heard? Thank you very much. Yeah, a lot of laughter. You're exactly right. A lot of laughter. Because people thought, that's impossible. But I held true to the vision. I stayed consistent. And within two years, I lost the weight. Then I got into bodybuilding. I started supplementing my diet with a lot more protein, complex carbohydrates, and kept my fat pretty low. And I reduced the amount of cardio I was doing and really focused more on strength training. And so since the age of 19, I've been at the gym. These two guys, my security guys, Chuck and Ryan, they both work out with me. They're strong guys themselves. So does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay, give them a round of applause. Oh, yeah, what's your name, bud? Alex. Yeah, Alex. Uh, did anyone ever say sorry to you for making fun of you? You know what's interesting is um, I said thank you to a couple of the kids that made fun of me. Do you know why? Because it was, it was painful to me enough that I said to myself, I have to do something. The pain motivated me. Now, I'm not in any way condoning bullying. In fact, I think this. If any one of you guys see anybody else here that's getting made fun of or teased for whatever freaking reason, if you don't have, and I'm gonna use a little bit of colorful language, the balls to stand up for your brother, then you don't deserve to be a Vianney. You guys should stand up for what's right because you might be the only person that will do so for that other person. And that person might come to you years later and say it was because of you that I didn't go home that night and kill myself or quit school or whatever because you gave me the sense that someone cared. You guys have no idea of the impact you can have on another person's life. So when I have people now come to me that bully me that ask for my weight loss advice, uh, and the point I'm making is simple, is that if you're willing to look at everything that happens that's hard in your life, as an opportunity for you to grow from, life will become a wonderful experience. But you've got to find the meaning in things, guys. You've got to look for what can I use from this? What can I learn from this? What can this do for me? Rather than why is this happening to me? The power of questions in life is what determines where you end up. Make sense? Yeah. Give them a round of applause.
Ja. Come on. You okay? I met you yesterday. Yeah. Hi. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, how do you define true happiness? Great question. I think that it's something that changes. I don't think it's something that is uh, a static thing. I find happiness in becoming. Like I said, it's never when you get something that you're your happiness in my experience. It's in the pursuit of it. Because what you become ultimately determines what you're able to get in the future. Think about this. There was someone that once said, if all the wealth in America, guys, was distributed evenly, it would be only a matter of five to six months before it was back into the pockets of the men that, and women that had it. Why? Because it's the skills and the abilities and the talents that you acquire in pursuit of what you want that allow you to have what you have. Does that answer your question? Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, I noticed that you were bullied. Um, What's your name, though, first? Uh, my name's Steven. What is it? My name's Steven. Steven? All right, buddy. Yeah. Um, back when you were in high school, like, I noticed you said uh, you were bullied back yeah. then. Uh, how severe would that get? Like, would they ever, like, do they ever, like, do any acts of violence against you? Or okay, uh, a couple things. Once, to clarify, it was really bad, really, really bad in grade school. Yeah. Grade school was the worst. I literally didn't want to go to school in grade school. I went to CBC. So, oh, boy. Turning on your guy. Didn't I give somebody an Xbox? I mean, doesn't that count for something? <laughs> All right. So at CBC, quiet, guys. At CBC, all right, it was a lot more accepting, which was a, a kind of a bad thing. But one thing did happen. I was embraced by, at that time, a guy who was the dean of school, his students there. I was overweight, and he saw something unique in me, and he asked me if I wanted to work for him. He was a super nice military guy. So he made me feel real secure because my dad wasn't around a lot and my mom was drinking a ton. My mom was in and out of the hospital almost every day uh, and she was at death's door multiple times. So he gave me a lot of strength. Well, one of the classmates who uh, I was in school with started parading around that he was selling tons of pot, a lot of it. And all of a sudden I was faced with an immense conflict do I stay loyal to a guy that's really been helpful, who's making a job for me and really helping me out, or, and, and turn this kid in, or do I keep my mouth shut and just don't say anything? It was a difficult time. I did the right thing. And I know it's not popular amongst younger people, but I'm here to tell you what. That kid came to me and thanked me. Because at that point, he, he was expelled from the school. But he came back and said, I wouldn't have turned my life around, Charles, if you hadn't done that. They came to me at a hockey game. You asked about violence. I went to, I had to be, if I went to any sporting event after that happened, threats were made to burn down my house. My parents' house was threatened to be burned down by these kids that were selling drugs because this was a big organization, guys. And here's this 360-pound kid that has no confidence, no self-esteem that turn this kid in. So how do you think I feel, right? I'm, I'm pretty threatened. So I had that happen, but I faced it. Guys, when you have something that's scary in your life, the fear of it is so much more intense and worse than the actual experience of it. When you have something you're afraid of, face it, man up. If you want to know how to really attract in your life a partner that loves you and adores you for the man you are, own yourself. Step up and become the man that you're capable of becoming. Don't be a boy. Do what's right. When you something, see something that's not right happening, stand up for that person. You know, why are there so many people that love the movies like The Avengers, Captain America, and all that? Because we all, as humans, want to see the right thing done. But when we're in our peers, everyone's laughing and joking and afraid, right? Everybody's so scared of doing the right thing. I challenge each and every one of you to do the right thing. Maybe handle it differently than I did. If you know of someone that's involved in some stuff that's bad, you don't have to run to the dean right away. Maybe you have the confidence to go and talk to the guy. Say, look, dude, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing with your life? What are you doing? I, this, this shit messes people's lives up. Why are you even 
tempting yourself with that. And you talk to them on a real deep level. And maybe that will do it. All I'm saying is face the thing you're fearing and you'll find it's not nearly as bad as you anticipate it being. That answer your question? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, come on up. Yeah, what's your name, bud? Uh, I'm Josh. Josh, nice to meet you, buddy. Nice to meet you. Uh, my question is... Um, or get a little closer. All right. uh, my question is, uh, what was the hardest part after like, starting to uh, build up muscle and all that? I would say the most difficult part is staying consistent and not getting satisfied. You guys have to understand that if you want to achieve anything in life, don't get comfortable. Comfort is the enemy of success. When you get comfortable, that's when the end begins. When you start to become satisfied, that's when you start to decline. Always look for the edge. So after I started building muscle and after I got to this and I had a six pack and you know, I, I have a beautiful girlfriend that I love and I've adored for a long time, all that stuff, it gets easy then to become satiated or to feel totally complete. That's why you've got to have passion for what you do. You've got to love what you're doing more than just what it gives you. You've got to love the process. I take money from guys when I help them lose weight and take money from women when I help them lose weight, but I don't do it for the money, guys. I don't come here because I get paid to come here. I come here because of the opportunity that I see to help just one person here that this story and this message is for, that changes the entire direction of their life because of me being willing to make myself vulnerable. I'm talking about stuff that most people don't want to talk about, that are embarrassed to talk about it. It makes other people uncomfortable to hear it, much less talk about it. So what I'm saying is, when you have something that you want to go after, you asked about muscle building, make sure that you make the process that's required something you actually enjoy. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I also had one other one. Go ahead. Uh, could I get the book? Can you get the book? Yeah, you Absolutely. can keep the money. I was just asking if I could get the book. Oh, yeah, the book, I don't have any here. Oh, okay. uh, but if you uh, touch base with my team, right. or if, you, if any of you guys, if you have Twitter, Facebook, if you... Uh, Facebook Charles D'Angelo you'll find my whole page you can like the page or friend me whatever and uh, the book is called Think and Grow Thin and it's not just about weight loss guys it's all about personal development really starting to organize yourself in a way to move toward the things you want in life because I'm here to tell you guys amongst you are literal leaders in the future I have the unique privilege of touching the future by interacting with you guys Years down the road, you guys will remember this and say, there was this guy and he, was, he just told it how it was. And it changed my life. It changed the decisions I made. How do I know that? Because it's happened to me already. Talks I gave 10 years ago, people come and tell me that. So all I'm hoping that from today you guys get is this, is the knowing that you can do it, you must do it, you will do it, regardless of other people's opinions. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? That young man and that young man? Yeah, line up, guys. You guys can get up and line up, so that way it's faster. Because I know I'm running out of time. My name is Tyler. Tyler? And I just wanted to say that since I was uh, in seventh grade, I've been playing the guitar and trying to really hard and trying to work with music because that's what I want to do with my life. I want to be a musician. Sure. And uh, it's been really hard, and there's, like, all kinds of people that always put me down, and they say I can't do it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they'll say that I'll never be famous. Um, and there's a lot of people, there's some people that do cheer me up and say that I can do good. But like seeing all these people around me that are so talented already, it's really hard. Absolutely. Uh, I think I can never be that if they're already like a million years up in front of me and what I can do, I'll never get there. But then it's people like you and that help me every day to, to keep going. So I want to thank you already. Give him a freaking round of applause, guys. First off... Give him a round of applause for having the freaking courage to come up and say what he said. Awesome. Awesome. So in answer to your question, okay, how do you break through that negative dialogue? You look to people that did it. Do you know that if you look up the reaction to the Beatles in 1964, they said they wouldn't last? There are always going to be naysayers. 87% of the population is negative. I tell people that come to me for training and sales that to get a yes, you're going to get seven no's. Pursue no. Make no your vitamin. 
Make no something you go after. Walt Disney had the vision for animated films, colored animated films. Do you know how many banks turned him and his brother down? What would have happened if he would have said, I guess it's just, they're right. It would, never win it would have never freaking happened. So you stay true to that vision. You feed yourself with people like me, people that are doing the things that they've dreamt of doing. Because if you're willing to continue and be persistent, if you stand in, long line enough, stand in line long enough, you will end up being in front. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, bud. Hey, Charles. Xbox. Um, Mr. Xbox. I was actually going to come up and ask about, you know, like dealing with adversity, like Dan asked, and uh, I just thought that was awesome. Everything he asked and his story that he hit on, I was still right from me, but you answered that, and I'm really proud of what he's going for, too. That's awesome. And you know what, guys? These type of, these type of young men, okay, the ones that have the courage to stand up, okay, and yeah, there's people laughing and all that, but don't listen to that. Focus yourself on what you need to hear. Focus yourself on where you want to go. There's always going to be people that tell you you can't, more than people that tell you you can. If you listen to people that tell you you can't, you won't amount to anything in life. So program yourself with the people that tell you you can. And if you can't find them, look for them in people that have achieved the things. Read books, listen to tapes, download things on YouTube, whatever you need to do, because it's out there. Okay? okay? Yes, young man. Go ahead. Um, what's your message to people who uh, kind of blame genetics for their obesity and like kind of take uh, you know motivational speakers like yourself as uh, like having a charlatans yeah. and like people just selling false hope yeah I say well if that was the case then what's my story what's my excuse because my family was all obese so my father my grandmother my grandfather all of them were obese, and on my mother's side, they were all substance abusers, all of them alcoholic. My, mom, my grandpa, my mom's dad, died at 42 of alcoholism. Her mother was a severe alcoholic, had to have shock treatments to correct herself. That's when, the, if you ever saw the film with Jack Nicholson, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, where they shock people, my grandma had to have that so that she would stop drinking. So if you look at your environment as an explanation for who you are, you're limiting yourself. It has an influence. But your history and your heredity does not have to be your future. 